Hey everybody out there in the land of just plain fun, this is MJ and we are back. We're getting back onto this type study and we're going to be talking about types 11 and 12 today. We'll pick up where we left off from 9 and 10. Standard disclaimers go. All credit for the original type study goes to Roger K. Smith. This is the book, affectionately called P. Tampia. And it's by Roger K. Smith and this type study was done by him and that's what we're going to be highlighting the advantage of doing this on YouTube is that you get to actually see examples of it and compare it to maybe what you're holding in your hand so that you can figure out what type of plane you have. But having said that, remember that the type study is just a guideline. So this stuff is not written in stone and it's like the pirate code, you know, it's more of what we would call a guideline. If you're here, you're holding a plane in your hand that's got three patent dates in the bed like this right here and you're just trying to figure out what type it is. That's really, I'm gonna go ahead and break that down right off the bat. And that way, if that's all you need, then you can, you know, you'll be good. You'll know what type your plane is. And then if you wanna stick around and get some additional information and get a further breakdown of the type study, then of course you're welcome to. So you've got three patent dates in the bed, like so. The next thing you want to look for is, do you have a high, lo a high knob or a low knob? And so that's what that looks like high knob versus low knob. If you've got the low knob, chances are you're type 11. If you've got the high knob, chances are you're type 12. Next thing you're gonna look at is the brass blade adjustment screw or knob right here. Let's go with knob. If that is one inch, so it's the smaller one, then you're probably looking at a type 11. And if you have the inch and a quarter, which is the larger one, then you're probably looking at a type 12. So those are gonna be your two major differences that you can see right away. It's gonna be, you know, high knob versus low knob, and then the size of that brass blade adjustment screw. And the last major difference, if all things are equal, if everything on the plane is original, then the last major difference is gonna be your type 11 is gonna have your V logo, like so. And then your type 12 is going to have one of the sweetheart logos. This is the first of the sweetheart logos. This is going to be on your early type 12s. And it can also be one of three different sweetheart logos can actually go on the type 12s. I did a whole separate video on just the sweetheart logo. So I'm not going to go into all that detail here, but that should help you determine if the plane that you're holding is say a type 11 or mostly type 11 or if it's a type 12 and from here we can now go ahead and break it down further and look at some of the some of the nuance that helps us determine type 11 type 12 and, and help you identify what features your plane should have to be 100 percent correct let's go ahead and pick up where we left off with the type 10s if you've already watched that video or if you just know you know that it's two patent dates back there and the Type 10s were really only made for just two or three years, 1907 to 1909. And there were not a lot of changes. Well, there were no major changes to the body other than adding a patent date between the Type 10 and Type 11. And then it was the T logo on your Type 10s. There you are going to see some bleed over. So even though the Type 11 started in 1909, which was the, or excuse me, 1910, sorry, 1910, for the type 11s and that was when they went to the v logo that doesn't mean that they immediately stopped all production or stopped putting the the t logos on there and you know everything was a v logo that's not how it goes so there can be some bleed over so if you got a type 11 and you've still got a t logo holdout nothing wrong with that with the type 11s We've already gone over the three patent dates. We talked about the having a low knob and then talked about having the small brass blade adjustment. Other than that, as far as nuance goes, the type 11s, at least from my experience, is when the transition happened from the solid hourglass, excuse me, the solid brass barrel nut over to the hourglass style. That's been what I've seen from pulling planes apart. Maybe you've seen something different. By the time the Type 12s come around, it's predominantly going to be the hourglass style, or at least that's what I've seen. And when it comes to the Type 11s, that, that's really, those are really the key defining characteristics for it. And then, of course, the V logo, which is, in my humble opinion, the best of all the logos that Stanley had, which is part of the reason why 
I collect them just because they're awesome. But V logo there, type 11, produced from 1910 to 1918. And they're just, they're workhorses, you know, this is the best thing that Stanley made. But then in 1919, they had to go and mess it up and come out with what we now call the Type 12s. The body stays the same. We go to the high knob, as we already talked about, we go to the larger brass adjuster. And let me go ahead and show you the other major differences between the 11 and the 12. There's the two brass adjusters, so you can see them one inch versus inch and a quarter. Another major difference in the frog is right here you've got this this kind of deeper channel or groove that rides on either side whereas on the type 12s it's i don't know i want to say more smooth but it's a solid thing there there's it doesn't recess into it and then a major difference is right here this rib or ridge that comes up it stops right above the yoke on your type 11s and corresponds with this and if it's correct it corresponds with the brass but of course that could easily be changed and then on your type 12s, the ridge goes further up. So it's reinforced further up on the frog, presumably to keep the frog from shearing. And if you've been around a lot of planes, you know that if they hit, it's very common, especially for the early ones, for the top of the frog to be sheared off. So now we're reinforced a little bit further up on the type 12s, which is a good thing. Next step is gonna be your logo on your iron. So we're gonna transition from the V logo that we talked about over to the Sweetheart logo, and I did a whole video on just the Sweetheart logos, of which there are three, and I'm just going to invite you to go ahead and watch that video. I'm not going to go through all three of those, but just know that your Type 12s are going to have one of the three Sweetheart logos on them, and any one of those can be correct. And this is where we really, really get in the weeds, and thankfully, Roger Smith did as well. So for those of you that are that are purists and you want everything to be 100% correct, which I am not, by the way, I have some type 11 and some type 12 lever caps on mine. If you look, you can see that this being the type 12 lever cap is actually, this lever is actually longer. And I don't know if I'm capturing that very well on the video, but it is actually longer. And the difference is three thirty seconds of an inch. And so the type 11 is actually one and three thirty seconds inches long and then your type 12 is one and three sixteenths so very very similar and the also the round over on the edge is different here between the 11 and 12 as well and the verbiage in p tampia just in case you haven't read it is the edges are not as rounded that's the way that it's worded and i'm going to go ahead and say that that's probably going to be very very difficult to capture on camera but if you can see it then more power to you and if you can't and you're concerned about having the correct 11 versus 12 then just look at your or compare the length of the lever there and you'll know whether you've got the right one other than that they're identical there is one anomaly that i've seen enough of that it warrants mentioning and that is there are some Type 11s, and when I say Type 11, meaning it has the older style frog, it's got the small brass adjuster, but it has a tall knob. And so my personal theory, based on what I've seen, is that the tall knob started showing up at the factory first, and they started getting put on before they changed over the frog. I like to affectionately call that a Type 11.5, but that's certainly not going to be written anywhere. It's not going to be documented anywhere. It's mentioned in this video. I don't expect that to take hold in the community, but I call it an 11.5. I've seen enough of them that I do believe that they were put out by the factory that way. But if it's something that irritates you, and if you want to have all of your planes be the same, then by all means, throw your low knob back on there so that you can have a true type 11, but make sure you got the right lever cap as well. As an added bonus for those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you already know that I collect type 11s and I've had at least a couple people ask about my personal collection. So you're looking at at least a part of it. This is pretty much my pride and joys here. Got my number twos, of course the 2C, which is fairly uncommon. It took me a long time to find that one. And then my regular two smooth. Most of mine, <laughs> Are, as a matter of fact, everything else is corrugated except for the number one, of course, because in case you didn't know, the number one was not offered 
in the corrugated version. But everything's V logo except one. I do have one holdover T logo. Everything is corrugated if it was made corrugated by Stanley, other than the two, the number two smooth bottom. And I've got this imposter here, which is my five and a quarter. I went in and threw a V logo on that, even though it's not 100% correct. This one is a type 13. So this is kind of like a little primer, a little teaser for the type 13 and 14 video. Because this was the first time that the five and a quarter was introduced. And of course, being a quarter, you get a guy, which by the way, was nothing more than a, a marketing gimmick for Stanley. The studies have been done and it does not in fact reduce friction as was claimed, but it's fun. And it's fun getting it all filled with wax buildup when you're actually using them. So again, little teaser for the type 13 and 14 video. I'm not gonna promise when that one's gonna come out because I don't seem to film these regularly. But if anybody has any questions, comments, anything you wanna add, anything you wanna maybe correct or, or share your experience, you are more than welcome to do so here on YouTube or come on over to Just Plain Fun, the parts division over on Facebook. And just for fun, cause that's what this is all about. Here's a few more of my V logo goodies that I've been collecting over the last few years. I still don't have everything. I still need a 10 C and a 10 and a half C. So if anybody has a lead on one of those, by all means, let me know. Most of all, I just want to thank everybody for watching and thanks for helping us get to, I think we're closing down to 550 subscribers now. Really appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing all of you out on the Facebook page here on YouTube and elsewhere. Thanks for watching.